Good day my schoolers, welcome to my school channel. My name is Alexandra. So in this video, you'll be joining me to solve the Jam CBT Pass question for the subjects Literature and English Year 2011. Please stay with us, do not go anywhere and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel. So in this video, we'll be solving question 1 to 20. Now we'll begin with question 1. These questions are based on general literary principles. The large space above the proscenium in a theater from which the scenes are controlled is called dash. The answer to this question is option C, flies. Now in theater, we speak of a fly system, and the fly system is a system of ropes within the theater that enables the stage crew to fly quickly okay and what do they fly they fly components they fly components between clear views of the audience and out of view in the large opening so examples of these components include curtains lights um, stage effects and sometimes people okay so it enables the stage crew to fly um, equipment or components okay needed in the stage and when we speak of proscenium we know that proscenium is a part of the theater in front of the curtain okay so this makes a lot of sense and option c is the final answer but when we speak of a side a side gives us a glimpse of the character's stuff and that is why a side is defined as a speech by a character meant to be heard by the audience now when we speak of anachronism anachronism simply is against time so anachronism is a literary device in which people or things are placed in the wrong time okay these people are associated with a particular time in history okay but then they are placed or they are seen in the wrong time okay so option d settings settings is the time and place of a literary work so option c is the correct answer to this question question two good warriors make others come to them and do not go to others when you induce an opponent to come to you then their force is always empty like attacking emptiness with fullness is strange stones on eggs Zhang Yu, the art of war. The theme of the passage above is dash. Option A, folly of soldiers. Option B, spurring people to action. Option C, war. Option D, inspiration. The best answer to this question is war. When you take a look at the poem, you see that it captures um, the strategy that is essential for winning a war. Okay, the strategy to winning a war, the strategy to becoming the victor, uh, strategy to win. Okay, and we know that war, when there is war, there's usually the conqueror and the conquered, we have the victor and the defeated. Okay, so that's the entirety of war. And so the best answer to this question is option C, war. Question three, the repetition of single words or phrases at the beginning of a line is dash. The answer to this question is option D, parallelism. In literature, when we speak of parallelism, it is the repetition of words or phrases within a sentence. But when we speak of assonance, assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds. Onomatopoeia is the formation of words from the sound associated with it. And alliteration is the repetition of consonant sound. So the answer to this question is option D, parallelism. Question four. A ballad is meant to be dash. Option A, acted. Option B, discussed. Option C, writing. Option D, sung. The answer to this question is sung. A ballad is meant to be sung. Now let's get into the concept of ballad. A ballad is a poem or a song that narrates a story in a short stanza. Okay, so a ballad typically is a series of four line stanza that is meant to be sung. So it is traditionally set uh, for music. Okay, it is meant to be sung as an oral tradition. Okay, so it is poetic and at the same time it is musical. So the answer to this question is option D, song. Question five in drama, drama third is E U dash. Option A, write or edit play. Option B, direct a play. Option C, act a film. Option D, futures in a play. The answer to this question is option A, write or edit play. So a dramaturg is one who edits text or literary works. Okay, so we might want to ask the question, what's the difference between dramaturg and dramatist or playwright? Okay, since we know that dramatists and playwrights are the same. 
Okay, so the Oxford Dictionary recognizes dramaturg as the same with uh, dramatist and playwright. Okay, so uh, first, the mi first meaning for uh, dramaturg according to the Oxford Dictionary is dramatist. So according to the Oxford Dictionary, dramaturg is also dramatist. But it also identifies dramaturg as a literary editor, so one who edits. So it's safer to define dramaturg as one who writes and edits. Okay, so we can also restrict uh, dramatist to one who writes and um, playwright to one who writes. But dramaturg, make sure you include one who edits. Okay, so option A is the final answer to this question. Question six: Travelogue is a work of art written dash. Option A by a famous playwright. Option B by an unpopular novelist. Option C on a journey. Option D before the death of the author. The answer to this question is on a journey. So, Travelogue is a work of art written on a journey, and it features us about the places visited and experienced by a traveler. So, the answer to this question is option C on a journey. Question seven: Plays are basically meant to dash. Option A: Change the world. Option B: Be read for pleasure. Option C: Be presented on stage. Option D: Keep people out of trouble. Now, plays are written and they are meant to be presented on stage. So we have characters dramatizing the written document. Okay, so it is meant to be dramatized or presented on stage. So option C is the correct answer to this question. Do not forget that you can take practice questions with our simulated jam CBT past questions. All you need to do is you click on the link in the description below. It takes you to the My School website. There you have to download My School Mobile app for your Android phones and My School software for your computers and laptops. Please go ahead and download and start practicing. Now moving on to question eight. A character who reenacts familiar experiences that reader easily identify with is Dash. Now the answer to this question is round character. What do we mean by a round character? A round character is well-rounded or all-rounded and this means that the character is fully developed in all aspects. Okay, so we get to see all of the sides of this character, all of his personality. We get to see when he's happy and joyful and gentle and kind and sweet and then we get to see when he's angry, frustrated or when he's nervous and agitated. So we get to see all of these personalities and we can tell a lot more about the character. We can, we know the character well because of all of this aspect he has portrayed in in the text okay so these are emotions that we are familiar with these are personality we are familiar with and we can easily identify with them so these are round characters and we have the protagonist and major characters exhibiting or being the round um, character so within a narrative we usually have or there are four um, character types we have the flat and around, which has to do with the character personality, that is how well we know the character, and then we have the static and dynamic, which has to do with the character's growth. Okay, well, for this question, the answer to this question is option A, round character. I believe you're enjoying this content. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos. Question 9. A plot of a story generally refers to the dash. Option A. Intrigue made by a character against the hero. Option B. Way in which the events of the story are organized. Option C. Way in which the writer began the story. Option D. The way the writer ends the story. The answer to this question is option B. Way in which the events of the story are organized. Now, how do we define a plot? A plot is the chronological or the systematic arrangement of events of a story. So it is arranged uh, in a certain way and it is the arrangement of events, okay, how the story should progress. Okay, so option B is the correct answer to this question. Question 10. The metric pattern in a line of poetry with five stressed and five unstressed syllables is dash. Option A, trochaic decameter. Option B, iambic pentameter. Option C, anapestic meter. Option D, dactylic meter. Okay, so the answer to this question is option B. Now let's discuss a little about metrical foods. Okay, so we have the types of metrical foods and we have the unit of metrical foods. When we talk about the types or the kinds of metrical foods, we are talking about this trochaic, iambic, anapestic, dactylic. We have so many other examples of uh, 
symmetrical force. Now, when we look at the unit, it tells us how many, okay? So we have monometer, which means one, diameter, which means two, trimeter, tetrameter, pentameter, which means five, decameter, which means ten. Okay, don't forget that the question says five and five. So this makes option B the answer. Now, let's explain what trochaic means. Trochaic or trochee, T-R-O-C-H-E-E, -E, means that the first and the second syllable is unstressed. Iambic means the first syllable is stressed, the second syllable is unstressed. So you can see why option B is our final answer. Because since this is pentameter 5, so we have 5 stressed and 5 unstressed. For anapestic, anapestic means uh, the first and the second syllable is unstressed, while the third syllable is stressed. So the first and the second are unstressed, while the third is stressed. For dactylic, dactylic means the first syllable is stressed, while the second and third is unstressed. So the answer to this question is option B. Question 11. Theseus, now fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour, draw on space for happy day, bring in another moon, but oh me thinks how slow. The old moon wanes, the old moon wanes, she lingers my desires like a step drama or a do -wager. Long withering out a young man's revenue. So this is William Shakespeare's uh, Midsummer uh, Night's Dream. So the literal device used in the excerpt, excerpt above are, the answer to this question is option A, personification and simile. So personification is giving the attribute of a human being to a non-human and simile is the use of like and as to compare. Okay, so where can we find personification and simile in this excerpt? We know that this excerpt is about a man who is preparing to marry someone okay marry Hippolyta okay so he's looking forward to his union with her but she seems to be lingering she seems to be uh, taking her time lagging behind and all of that so this is someone that is impatient so we can see our nuptial hour draws on space okay to draw to draw on is to call on okay so that's an example of personification it is personified the old man went went is the decrease in size so that's an ex under example now she lingers my desires like a step drama or a do waja. So this is the use of simile uh, to compare. Okay, so the answer to this question remains option A, personification and simile. Question 12. You are the silent cold of pleasure locked in the world wordless wonder. You are the hive of pleasure no dragon can plunder. So this is Bemisola Adioti's dream code. Now the question is, the excerpt above achieves its rhetorical effect through the use of dash. Okay, so the answer to this question is option D, metaphor and rhyme. Now, let's start with option A, repetition and meiosis. Now, repetition is the, the sameness or the repetition of or repeating words and phrases in the line of a poetry. And we can see that there is no repetition in this word. Okay, repetition will mean, okay, repeating the word like silent, 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 silent. But yeah, what we have is a structure repeated and that's parallelism. Okay, so repetition will not work for this exact. Meiosis, meiosis means downplay, that is to make lesson or to diminish a situation or a statement. Okay, so option B, cisura and hyperbole. Now, cisura is a pause within a, a poetry. Okay, it's within a poetry is a pause and it's always marked by uh, some form of punctuation like full stop, comma, dash, uh, or ellipsis, the three full stop and hyperbole. So, we see that there is no cisura in this excerpt and we see that this may function as an hyperbole, but then there is no caesura in this excerpt. Now, option C, alliteration and irony. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sound, and we can find that in the first line, word, wordless wonder. But is this irony? There is no irony in this excerpt, because irony is saying the opposite of what you mean. Okay, so when we think of metaphor, we have metaphor and we have rhyme in this excerpt, okay? You are the silent code of pleasure. You are my sunshine. You are the love of my life. Uh, you are the art of stone. All of these are metaphor. Metaphor is a direct comparison when you say A is B. So you are this, you are that. Okay, so this is a direct comparison, the first and the second line. And when we speak of rhyme, rhyme is the correspondence of sound at the end of the lines of a poetry. Now let's take a look at the first line here. We have wonder. Okay, so and we have blunder. So except for the first consonant, here and the, f the first consonant cluster which is pu and l the rest of the sounds are similar and this is rhyme 
okay so we have metaphor and rhyme in this excerpt and so option d is the final answer to this question question 13 it was not yet closing time but yet most staff were trooping out of their offices the lift was working now and he squeezed himself into it breathing with difficulty the body odor emitted by one of the passengers he sighed with relief when they got to the ground floor and tumbled out of the lift. So this is a text by Ken Saru, we were a forest of flowers. So in the excerpt above, the subject's experience in the lift is dash. The answer to this question is unpleasant. So all you need to employ in this question is imagery. Just close your eyes and visualize, visualize yourself uh, sharing the same experience as the subject by Ken Saru, we were, and you find this disgusting and unpleasant so it's not comfy it's not comfortable it's not funny so it's not amusing and it's not timely let me say something is timely it's prompt okay so the answer to this question is unpleasant question 14 in those days when civilization kicked us in the face when holy water slapped our cringing bros the vulture built in the shadow of their talents this is David Diop, the vulture. The dominant literary device used in the lines above is dash. The answer to this question is personification. We know that personification is giving the attribute of a human to a non-human. Now, let's go back to the exact. We see when civilization kicked us in the face, so we can imagine civilization having legs and lifting it to kick our face. Okay, and when all the water slapped our cringy bros, okay, and you can imagine only what is having hands to slap okay and then creating the shrinking bros on our faces okay so the answer to this question is option b personification question 15 do not thank me instead let me ask you a question now you have all come here sprawling vomiting rubbing tears on one another begging me to do my duty and help you but what about yourselves what have you done to help yourselves answer or is the land at peace and not people hailing and dying. So this is all I wrote to me is the gods are not to blame. In the excerpt above, the land is not at peace because of dash. Now if you've read this text, you will know that the answer is option C, sickness and death. So the land is not at peace because people were dying, people were falling sick. And the king or the wali was doing his duty and so he urges the people to also help themselves. Okay, so there was a curse on the land, and the curse is attributed to Odewale being the king. He's a child who has been destined to kill his father and marry his mother. And so, because he became king, the curse started plaguing the people. It started um, afflicting the people. And so, the people um, came crying to him, um, begging to, for, for the king to help them. But the king said they should help themselves. He's helping himself because the sickness is also in the palace. So they should help themselves. So the answer to this question is option C, sickness and that question 16 I am not afraid of anything he told them I have done almost everything in this world I have committed all crimes you can think of and been jailed for most of them I have been in prison for more hours than I have been out of it within the last five years in recounting his criminal life, the speaker's stone is dash. So clearly from this example, you see that the criminal is showing excessive pride for his criminal achievements. So the answer to this question is option D, boastful. So he's not regretful, he's not subdued. Subdued is to be defeated. Okay, so repentance is not repentance. And so option D is boastful. Option D is the correct answer to this question. Question 17, I have said too much onto a heart of stone and laid my hand onto one cherry on it. There is something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong potent fault it is that it is but mocks reproof. So this is William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. A heart of stone in the line above is an example of dash. The answer to this question is metaphor. Metaphor is a direct comparison. So a heart of stone is a good example of metaphor and it means a cruel person, a wicked, brutal person. Okay. So, other examples of metaphor would include um, light of the world, you're my sunshine, the love of my life, and all of that. So, these are examples of metaphor. So, option C is the correct answer to this question. If you have questions to ask, please feel free to ask your questions. How do you go about this? Just click on the link in the description below. It takes you to the My School website. There, you can ask as many questions as possible, and solutions will be provided to you within a short period of time. Now, moving on to question 18. Homage to Peregwede, the triumphant mother of morning radiance in Chameleon's Velvet. 
let this done bring on its real trains of good tidings. Now, this is Benny Sola Adioti's salutation to the gods. The excerpt above is an example of dash. So the answer to this question is option A, invocation. What is invocation? From the word invoke, invocation is calling for the assistance or presence of a supreme being. Okay, so the supreme being in this context would be Beregidi. So option B, old, old is praising something. It's a poem that praises something. Elegy is a lamentation for the dead. Limerick, Limerick is usually humorous and is a five line stanza. Okay, so usually consisting of five lines in the stanza. So the answer to this question is option A, invocation. If you have better steps or explanation or solutions to any of these questions, please feel free to use the comment section below. Indicate the question and the solutions you would like to share. Question 19. Blood was to prove no service to the king. The rejection he had suffered at Adama's hands pushed the spirit into a comfortless hole in which, alone with himself, he searched in vain for ways to run from his inner emptiness. Okay, so this is Ayikoi Ama 2000 Seasons. The narrator's attitude to the king is one of dash. Option A, envy. Option B, suspicion. Option C, contempt. Option D, sympathy. The answer to this question is contempt. When we think of contempt, we think of worthlessness. And contempt is the feeling that something or someone is worthless. Okay, we think of disdain. We think of disrespect. Okay, so from the first line, we can tell that this is this, uh, this is contempt. Blood was to prove no solace to the king. So blood was not enough to console, to comfort the king. So option C is the correct answer to this question. Question 20, the wood decay, the woods decay and fall. The vapor will be abundant to the ground. Man comes and fills the field and lies beneath. And after many, a summer dies the swan. The subject matter of the line above is dash. The subject matter of the line above is death. Okay, so we can see death being reinforced in each of the lines. So for the first line, the wood decay. When the wood decay, it becomes useless and the wood decay and fall. So once it falls to the ground, it gets rotten and there's little or nothing you can do with it. So the vapor will be abiding to the ground. We know that vapor is a substance which is in its gas phase of gas form, which is diffused in the air. And then it is condensed to the liquid form and then it falls to the ground. Okay, so the man comes and fills uh, the field. So the man is giving birth to and he occupies the space on the field on, on, on the earth and later he dies. That is the meaning of lies beneath. So these are all figurative. Okay, so the next line, af and after many a summer, we know that summer is the warmest season of the year. Okay, it dies the swan. And we know that swan is attributed to the cold season. Okay, that is winter. So when the summer comes, the uh, swan is not visible. Okay, so the answer to this question is option A, death. We come to the end of the segment. I believe you enjoyed every bit of it. Please do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and lastly, tap on the bell notification to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.